this we have to talk about this we have to so this is courtesy of oh let's go and talk about this please we have to let's move this around a bit oh my god we have to talk about this so the timeline my timeline specifically where i have a mixture of people who i follow from the fashion people to the gays who talk about cultural events in terms of reality tv shows to the people from the states that just talk about stuff that i have no idea what's going on like just crazy stuff right just as i've got a good people good group of people that i follow online but there's also a contingent when it comes to football i follow because i'm obviously i'm a bit of a football addict but i try to keep it somewhat muted in terms of the platforms i want because people tend to not like that kind of energy but in general i'm a big fan of football obviously i um, follow united and obviously you know most of the content that i kind of follow usually comes from fan channels and obviously watching games but fan channels are a big part of kind of the culture in football nowadays and one of the most prominent ones being AFTV, which is obviously an arsenal focused um, channel has launched a career of many notable figures from that channel who basically go on on there so basically a fan channel works in a way of you know these guys attend the matches live or they watch them on stream and then during the game you know they maybe live stream the match with their reactions or after the game the host of the show will basically interview them and ask them for their feedback and, and you know and whatever impressions of the game and what actually happened going forward and then maybe maybe you know ask them maybe what they think the club could do you know basically allow them to rant for five to ten minutes and these clips sometimes go viral especially with arsenal when they're losing you know quite often or they're performing quite poorly people love to kind of hate watch these channels in order to kind of get a rise out of the people and see them get a bit emotional one of the leading figures on there is a guy called dt um I don't know if he, what his actual name is, it Daniel Taylor. I don't know why he's called DT, but regardless, right? Um, he's one of the main guys on there. And it's, this news came out of left field because I thought from what I heard through the great, not great, but from what I heard from people in comments and talking, whatever it may be, that allegedly the reason why he wasn't been, because he hasn't been on AFTV for a while, the reason why he hasn't been there was supposed to be something to do with his mental health because he's, you know, he's a bit of an antagonizing figure, a bit of a polarizing figure, uh, a bit of a troll, a bit of a shit poster. And because of that, he kind of you know, has a lot of people that, you know, not really necessarily fans of him. So they maybe leave him a lot of abuse. And he's obviously got a lot of, he's got in a, with a lot of spats with people and arguments. And it made sense that someone like that would maybe be suffering from some sort of mental health issues because of all the abuse they were getting. But also it's hard to believe because he's such a bully that I've also thought that kind of, kind of, um, mental health excuse was usually one of those defenses people do when they're bullies and they're not brave enough or willing enough to face up to their um people kind of standing up for themselves and coming at them with facts and whatnot they kind of hide behind the whole mental health thing because nowadays unfortunately people use the mental health excuse um to basically excuse their shitty behavior because people can get away with it nowadays because mental health has become such an important thing to talk about nowadays because it was overlooked for so long so i think he kind of manipulated the situation quite clearly because this story came out on a timeline recently um just the other day actually regarding him and the actual truth of why he's been away for so long so it says yeah ft regular handed an increased prison sentence for violating for sorry for violent stalking so this whole time he's been away it hasn't because he's been away because he's had mental health issues because he's been convicted of violently stalking his ex-partner and i think the mother of his child in a violent manner absolutely nutty behavior and it's, it's so bad it was even on the government website which i'm not sure why it was on there i'm not sure if this is thing that happens all, all the time and we only get the news that's reported on actual media platforms but this is quite wild that they put it on the government website so it says here violent stalker handed increased prison sentence liam good enough interesting name there because it's the same name as the japanese brand that i used to kind of love and know and love but you know his name's you know whoever um has had his sentence tripled following a referral to the court of appeal by the solicitor general alex chalk qcmp it says the following a man who stalked assaulted and kidnapped a woman has had his sentence tripled following a referral to the court of appeal mate do you know how sick that is to to flip in stalk assault and kidnap somebody that you were once in love with and is the mother of your child that is some sicker behavior liam good enough 42 i didn't know he was that old he's actually one of the only white people i've seen that doesn't look as old as they actually are you know he's definitely a proponent for white don't crack in some cases i didn't know he was that old he's 42 years old shit and he was acting like that on the internet because some of his reactions, honestly, some of the stuff that he was doing on that channel would make you think, is this guy buzzed or something? But, you know, men of the, of a certain age, when you don't necessarily, especially when you have kids and you have a family, 
you don't necessarily have a lot of interest that you kind of do outside of maybe sports so you can get sometimes overly invested in it so you can maybe excuse some people for going a bit loopy for throwing controllers at their tvs and breaking stuff because what else do you have to look forward to in a weekend and when you see your team that you support putting out an absolutely abject performance it's natural for you to be a bit annoyed but some of the reactions that he had you'll be like is this guy all right like so to know he's 42 is even more wild anyway let's continue stalks his former partner as she went on a date Jealousy sending the victim's brother's messages, threatening suicide and demanding to know the location of the victim. Horrible. Using a tracker feature on her phone, good enough, drove to the hotel. The victim was staying at and verbally abused her as well as assaulting her companion. He then proceeded to photograph her in a state of undress. Yo. So she was somewhat naked. Yo. Good enough, dragged the victim out of the hotel um, room to his car, suggesting he had a knife and that her son was in the vehicle. Sick of behavior. However, when she realized that her son was not in the car, she tried to escape. A bystander intervened and the victim was able to get out of the car while Good enough escaped. Good enough was convicted of stalking and involving serious harm and distress and kidnapping on November the 5th, 2021 at the Aylesbury Crown Court. Good enough was sentenced to 12 months imprisonment um, and was also handed a suspended, sorry, restraining order of a period of 10 10 years so he was already in pen on the 5th of november or this i guess this was also but that's the interesting thing about uk court somehow was he able to keep this i guess i don't know what happens in the us why if you're a prominent figure your name especially if you got involved in some sort of crime or you've been convicted of a crime it gets splattered all over the papers sharpish but for whatever reason this was kept somewhat under wraps he was able to not tell people because there's a this narrative going around now at the moment where people are basically getting on robbie who is obviously the founder of aftv and basically trying to accuse uncle robbie of being complicit and knowing that you know dt was convicted of what he's convicted of there's this clip going around at the moment that's doctored where they make it seem as if they were laughing about dt's sentence right that he got now but it was actually a, a video of him talking about him going to prison when he was 19 for an unrelated incident um which is obviously sad because it looks like people are trying to sabotage uncle robbie and take away his platform which is really sick and pathetic i think because unless he did anything himself directly i don't see why he should be paying for the sins of people that appear on his channel that's not his business um, but it is a little bit funny and fugace to look at from afar because Uncle Robbie did have that spat with that Mo guy who was really political and he was talking a lot about, you know, the Israeli-Palestine conflict, obviously screaming free Palestine and wearing the pin. And for whatever reason, they had their passing falling out. But Robbie was really quick to kick that guy off the channel because, you know, he kind of got on his nerves and maybe lied about how he reacted to stuff. I don't know, whatever the reaction reason was. But then if he knew about what, dt did and he kind of kept him on the channel it does make him look a bit funny in the light but i don't think he knew because i don't think rubbish the rubbish don't strike me as that kind of guy and he's obviously he seems like a guy that seems to want to protect his brand i think he did the same thing with um with claude r.i.p claude i'm sure claude will be laughing and smiling at the fact that dt got locked up as well um whoever he is so r.i.p to claude but you know Robbie was very quick to get rid of Claude when Claude went through his madness and he said what he said about Son that could be construed as racism, which I think was a bit of an overtopped reaction. We've seen Robbie. He he knows, you know, he, he knows where his butter is where his bread's buttered. He wants to protect the brand at all costs and if you do anything to cross the brand, he gets you off his platform straight away. So I don't think that's the case. I don't think Robbie knew. And obviously, I also think if this guy has been talking about mental health and actually he's been going through this court case because i imagine he's going to court he's having to give evidence and stuff so this was something that was known within his family within his group people and i guess they didn't want to say nothing because you know the family want to protect the brand too because he's you know he's i'm assuming come you know he generates a lot of money on his channel no one wants to kind of stop those funds coming in as weird as that may sound i'd imagine so that was part of the case or they just went to protect his you know his reputation but this is a thing that he knew about for a while and he never told anybody i don't think so so I think he's obviously one of those people that's a compulsive liar. So it wouldn't surprise me, the scenario being that he maybe told Uncle Robbie from AFTV one thing about why he was going to prison or why he was maybe having to sit down and go away for a bit. But Uncle Robbie didn't know the extent of it. And obviously, because it's not your business, you're not going to, you know, dig in deeper. Like, I, I'm from ENDS. You don't ask people questions like that. You don't ask why they've gone to prison. You, you'll find out eventually. But there's many people that I knew growing up with that went to Penn for a couple of times, for a couple of months, maybe for a year, sat down. And whenever anyone asks where's he or she, they're on a holiday. They went back to visit family. Do you know what I mean? You just keep it stum. There's no need to get in people's business. But this is quite sick, especially considering the person that he was online. Um, this is really, really, really sick. Da -da -da. 
um, following the sentences of 10, of 10 months, or sorry, 12 months imprisonment, um, the Solicitor General referred good enough sentence to the Court of Appeal under the unduly lenient sentence scheme. I wonder what that happened. Did he say enough, something in the court to piss them off or was the um, solicitor just angry anyway? I wonder why they did that because I'm assuming that's not like a common thing. Some people just get away with stuff and get like sentences. I wonder why his sentence got referred to the ULS. If anyone else in the comments, let me know. On the 13th of January, the Court of Appeal found his original sentence to be unduly lenient and increased it to three years imprisonment. Speaking after the hearing, which again, we're not we're not seeing, it's not three years with early release or IPP or whatever, maybe. What's that thing called when you come out? Um, this is straight up three years. He's going to be sent in prison, which is going to, for somebody that went from sitting at home streaming ranting about arsenal to having to sit in a prison with actual criminals lifelong criminals and people that you know just people who are you know in a very bad place in their life you know maybe for an extended period of time that is a mind fuck in it but again you can't be you can't be doing stuff like that to women man it's just not on it really isn't i've never there's something i've never understood i've never got and i've never really stand for especially for guys in my circle i never understand the whole thing about hitting some woman especially a woman that you was in love with um to or being in a relationship with some or being to a point where you feel like the only thing that you can do to kind of get your point across is to strike somebody kidnap them you know threaten or whatever maybe somebody you should love it just doesn't make any sense i'd rather just break up i don't know because i know some people enjoy that kind of relationship where they you know they're arguing in their car they push you out of the car they slam the car they slam the door everything's shouting and screaming i'd never got that like if you're if you're if i'm with you i want to be with you and bust joke and hang out and have a good time i don't want to be like oh when i hear you putting your key in the door i'm like oh my god here we go do you know what i mean that's not a relationship that's just sounds like torture um but some people clearly enjoy that and you know luckily this lady was able to escape the clutches of all that sort of stuff and again big up the person that jumped in because a lot of people don't do that so that's also something that needs to be kind of noted people sometimes see that stuff as well because it's hard so i don't blame people too because it's difficult when people are having domestic disputes getting involved is sometimes can feel so demoralizing because usually more times out of 10 especially in abusive relationships people end up always going back to someone that abused them because they've just been abused to such a such an extent their brain's a bit fried in terms of how they're able to deduce things until it's maybe too late so it can be quite frustrating because you can clearly see this person isn't good for them but you know when love takes over all kind of sense making skills go out the window but anyway to end it the solicitor said the following um good enough subjected the victim to a shocking and frightening ordeal i referred this sentence to i referred this sentence because i considered it, it did not reflect the gravity of the offending and was unduly lenient i'm glad that the court of appeal agrees i wonder why they even gave him that lenient sentence in the first place maybe he gave a good case for himself in the courts maybe tried to persuade them that he was mentally ill I knew DT was mentally ill from time he allowed Rance to beat up his son. Him and Rance had a, you know, Rance is another guy who's another well-known um, content creator and, you know, person that kind of gives his opinion on terms of the team he supports, the same team as I, uh, Manchester United. They had an ongoing beef, you know, I don't know really why the why they had a beef or falling out, but they did have one. It got to a point where they decided to do a quote-unquote celebrity boxing match and for whatever reason, DT kind of backed out of it and started talking about his medical layments and, you know, him having, I don't know what he's actually got, IBS or something, he's got something wrong with him that didn't allow him to get into the boxing ring and fight, which is odd because you could easily done a fight where you know no one hits the body hits the face only it's easily to be done but he didn't want to do that um and then for whatever reason he decided to offer up his son as a sacrificial lamb and obviously his son is like 17 or something and rance is a grown man who's been boxing most of his life and he completely washed him in it so which is embarrassing it's just I, I knew from there that guy's a bit of a wrong one from the time he was he let his son get beat up by a random youtuber he certainly know you there's something wrong especially a youtuber that you picked a fight with like it's like why are you why are you letting your son back the beef and obviously it's on joe they covered it of course so it's all over every kind of platform you've got here a statement from AFTV basically denouncing TT saying the following this morning we've been made aware of news regarding DT who was a regular contributor on AFTV until July 2021 I like that regular um, was <laughs> we are utterly appalled and disgusted by his actions and totally condemned domestic abuse or violence of any kind DT has made us aware of personal issues in life however we can equivocally say that the extent of the information made public by the government today is new to us whoever's writing is bravo very very well written very to the point and distances themselves in three easy paragraphs next one dt appeared on aftv on the 1st of jan when the severity of his original legal case was unbeknownst to us the recent development came as a surprise uh, sorry came as a complete shock to us all at aftv in light of the shocking news dt will be offered absolutely no place on the channel again 
So he's completely off of the channel. It makes complete sense. I'm sure Ty is punching the air. Ty is obviously, uh, sorry, sorry. Ty is obviously punching the air. Claude, wherever he is, is clapping. Um, who else didn't really like him? Lee Gunn, I'm sure, is not a fan of his, who was on the TV for a while, but then he jumped off, I think, because he doesn't live here in the country anymore, does he? So I'm not too sure about that one. So a few people that would be happy that he kind of got locked up because, you know, he, no, he didn't really have many fans online apart from some Arsenal fans. Maybe some players too. Maybe Ozil is going to be happy. Maybe Zach is going to be happy. People sharing their memes. The judge after the trip with the princesses of DT. Take time. Was it? Take it. Take your time. Take your time. Good little memes. Uh, people saying this happened two weeks ago. No one on FTV knew anything about it. What was this? What's someone showing here? The, the the ref ruined the game. Oh, two one lost against City. And someone in the comments said something, right? What they say in the comments? Someone said it's good to be back and giving my opinions on the game. I see all the positive comments and it means a lot to me. It really does. Holy shit. Oh yeah, because he told everybody that he was suffering from mental health or something, right? It? And people were obviously giving him support because they thought he was suffering from mental health. But clearly the mental health he was suffering from was because he knew he was gonna get banged up because he banged up his missus or his ex missus madness in it absolute scumbag shit another one says liam good enough aka dt i was showing him hood rich he's got, it's funny he's all he had that, those hats called behave and then um you know he didn't behave the aftv and dt does it people celebrating <laughs> also in tottenham fans celebrating dt going to prison with a meme of those bloods and crips holding up a <laughs> joint bandana this is the best one i think uh, what's that? <laughs> it's just a, one of the best ones I love here. Robbie from AFTV when he's asked about DT uh, being a stalker. Oh, oh, nah, I never knew that. I never knew that. Oh. <laughs> so good. DT when he got home from AFTV and his wife was going to bed. Oh, mate. It's all Scott okay, so That obviously is horrendous to post, but yeah. DT from AFTV is a prison stalking and kidnapped. I mean, shocking always came across as a level headed guy. Okay, let's see what some of the rants DT did back in the day. Again, this is a bit unfair because, again, football for men is a bit of an emotional sport, especially if you, again, when you get older, you get, you don't have any hobbies, many interests. Your, your circle of friends shrink, especially when you have a family, you have kids, you're not out in a club. You know what I mean? Things change, things change. And having the outlet of being able to go to a game and celebrate or bemoan the misery of your team is a good release. So all these clips are a little bit, you know, but again, you know, he's a scumbag for what he done to his wife or his ex missus. So maybe you don't let him any, you don't give him any grace, but still, you know, let's put that context out there. But this is probably not going to help his case. But let's leave this little compilation of some of DT's best moments on AFTV. There's a, shut the fuck up. Seriously, Wait, shut oh, up, you oh, fucking oh, dickhead. Oh, shut, if you want to say something, yeah. you come on here and say something, bring me, bring me, yeah? Bring shut bring up. Me, don't don't interrupt. Interrupt. Move I'm yourself. I'm I'm Relax I'm your I'm fucking gums. How many games, shut. How many games have I been to this year? Every single fucking game, you silly mug. Fuck off. By the way, from what I know of men, anyone that barks this much usually isn't about anything. Usually. If you're that loud and aggressive, you're usually just trying to overcompensate for your, you know, um, how scary you actually are deep down. You know, you're really scary. You really, really are. You're not as much of a bad boy as you're trying to say because if you're really about the action, you're just going to turn off the camera and just start going into it. You're going to do a Jason Derulo. Usher, you're just gonna turn around, flying Superman punch. Do you know what I mean you're not gonna wait? You're just gonna go for it straight away. You don't do all this barking, shouting, and shit. About how many games? You've been to more games than me. I've forgotten more games than you know, knobhead. Shut up. Listen, let's stay on. Listen, let's fucking let's just, knobhead. Oi, oi, let's stay Dickhead. focused on this. I got fucking knobheads over there. Listen. I bet this is your first fucking game, you prat. Fuck off. Fuck off, dickhead. Stay on this. Nah, right? fuck him, Stay man. Fuck what? him. Hold on. Yeah, so um, pretty level-headed, calm dude, isn't it? Obviously, this meme is great. <laughs> Robbie and DT let him come back into air TV. Yeah, this is a good one to tweet. Robbie let DT come back to air TV, but kicked Mo out for speaking about Palestine. That's a bit reductive. They had a falling out. Obviously, the Palestine thing didn't help the context, but clearly, Robbie and Mo fell out because, from what I remember, Robbie felt like Mo was trying to mischaracter him and make it seem like he didn't want him to talk about politics when he didn't mind. But clearly, it was a conflict of interest there, and it was probably best that they kind of split and went their separate ways. But still, because I don't think you know they don't really talk much about politics on their platform. Maybe he does it on his own show or his own channel. He's got Robbie, but I don't think he uses AOTV TV as a political platform. It's just about football, so for sure. But obviously, Mo felt very strongly about the conflict in um or the conflict going on with israel and palestine at the time and he went to speak about it but 
you yeah, know, again, I think it's unfair. Let's leave Robbie out of this. Um, DT is obviously where he belongs in terms of the crime he committed, but just a mad, mad, mad news to see on a timeline, man. I'm not going to lie. Crazy, crazy stuff to see. And again, for most people, you don't care about it, you don't know, but in my little world of like following these kind of football sports influences, it's kind of funny to see this stuff play out in real life. I'm not going to lie.